The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. True, I have been very, very nervous, and I still am. But why will you call me insane? The disease had improved my senses. My sense of hearing became especially acute or strong. I heard everything in heaven and earth, and even in hell. Then how am I mad? Listen, notice how calmly I can tell you the story. I cannot say how I thought of the idea, but once I did, I could think of nothing else. I was not angry. I loved the old man. He had never hurt me. I didn't want his gold. It was his eye. One of his eyes looked like a vulture's. It was a pale blue eye with a film over it. His glance made my blood run cold. So I decided to kill him and get rid of the eye forever. Now this is the point where you think I'm crazy. But you should have seen how carefully I made plans. I hid my feelings well. Shortly before I killed the old man, I was kinder to him than I had ever been. About midnight, every night for a week, I turned the doorknob oh so gently, then I made an opening for my head. In the opening, I put a lantern with the light covered. Next, I stuck my head through the opening. I moved very, very slowly so as not to wake the old man. It took me an hour to get my head where I could see him. Ha! Would a madman have been as wise as this? Then I carefully opened the lantern cover so I could see the vulture eye. But every night, the eye was closed. I could not kill him until I saw his evil eye. Every morning, I asked how he had slept. So you see, he would have had to be a smart man to suspect me. On the eighth night, I was so still that a watch's minute hand moves faster than my hand. Before this moment, I had never felt how powerful and wise I was. As I slowly opened the door, the old man moved on the bed suddenly as if he had been surprised. Now you may think that I drew back but I knew that he could not see the door opening in the dark. Finally, I had my head in. My thumb slipped on the lantern. The old man cried out, who's there? I kept still for a whole hour. During that time, the old man sat up in bed listening. Then I heard a stifled or quietly held back groan of terror. I pitied the man, but my heart chuckled. I knew that he had been lying awake since the first noise. He had been growing more and more afraid, but there was no escape. The presence of death made him feel my head in the room. I waited for a long time, very patiently. Then I let out a thin ray of light from the lantern, which landed directly on the old man's vulture eye. It was wide open. Now, I have told you that I am not mad. Rather, my senses are too sharp, so I began to hear a low, dull, quick sound, like a watch wrapped in cotton. I knew that sound too well. It was the beating of the old man's heart. It made me even angrier, the way a drumbeat makes a soldier braver. I held the light on the eye, but the sound of the heart grew quicker and louder. He must have been terrified. The noise terrified me too. I thought the heart would burst, and now I became afraid that a neighbor might hear the sound. With a loud yell, I threw open the lantern and leapt into the room. He shrieked once, once only. In an instant, I dragged him to the floor and pulled the heavy bed over him. I then smiled to find the deed so far done, but for many minutes the heart beat on with a muffled sound. This, however, did not trouble me. It would not be heard through the wall. At length it stopped. The old man was dead. 
I removed the bed and examined the corpse. Yes, he was dead, stone dead. I placed my hand upon the heart and held it there for many minutes. There was no beating. He was stone dead. His eye would trouble me no more. Do you still think that I am insane? Consider how I hid the body. First, I cut up the corpse. Next, I took up three boards from the bedroom floor and hid the body parts there. There were no blood stains. I had caught all the blood in a tub. When I finished, it was four o'clock in the morning, still dark as midnight. I answered a knock at the door with nothing to fear. Three police officers entered. The officers had come because a neighbor had reported a shriek in the night. I smiled. What did I have to fear? I said I had shrieked from a dream. Saying the old man was away, I let them search the house. Then I led them to his bedroom and brought chairs. I wanted them to rest there. I put my own chair over the place where I'd hidden the old man. I had convinced the officers. We all chatted happily, but soon I felt myself grow pale. My head ached and my ears seemed to ring. I kept talking, but the feelings grew worse. Soon I realized that noise was not within my ears. No doubt I now grew very pale but I talked more fluently and with a raised voice. Yet the sound increased. What could I do? It was a low, dull, quick sound, much such a sound as a watch makes when wrapped in cotton. I gasped for breath and yet the officers heard it not. I talked more quickly, more wildly, but the noise continued to increase. I stood and argued about nonsense in a high key and with violent gestures, but the noise grew even louder. Why would they not be gone? I paced the floor back and forth with heavy strides as if excited to fury by the observation of the men. But the noise continued to grow. What could I do? I dragged my chair over the floorboards, but the noise arose over all and grew louder and louder and louder. Still, the officers chatted and smiled. Was it possible they could not hear it? No, no, they heard, they suspected, they knew they were making a cruel joke of my horror. Anything was better than their hypocritical or false smiles. I could bear it no more. I felt I must scream or die. And now, again, listen louder, louder, louder. Villains, I shrieked. Pretend no more. I admit the deed. Tear up the floorboards. Here, here. It is the beating of this horrible heart.